Hey everyone, in this mini lecture we're going to look at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex numbers. Before we hop into that, let's take a look at some background content that we should understand. First, let's look at something like this, the square root of 16. We know the index has an invisible 2 whether we write it there or not. Well, this means for us what number times itself is equal to 16. So, we say what number times itself because we're multiplying the same number twice, right? So, the index tells us that. So, the number times itself would be 4. 4 times 4 is 16. However, let's look at another situation. If we're taking the square root of negative 81, we're looking for a number times itself to make negative 81. Now again, it has to be that exact same number. We can't use two different numbers. So one would think 9. 9 times 9, that makes a positive 81. Well, we're looking for a negative 81. Then we would think uh, negative 9 maybe, right? Let's try negative 9 times a negative 9. Well, that also makes positive 81. So there's no number times itself to make a negative 81. So we came up with an idea in mathematics for the imaginary number, i. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So if we have the square root of negative 81, we can rewrite it as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. That square root of negative 1, we said, is the i times the square root of 81. And now we can actually take the square root of 81. There is a number times itself that will get us 81, and that number is 9. 9 times that i is 9i. So now we know the concept of imaginary numbers. So again, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. All right? So something to remember. And then, if you understand that, then know that when we square a square root, so let's take a look at a square root again. Let's say 16, and then I'm squaring it. When we square a square root, they kind of cancel each other out, and you're left with 16. So same thing. What if we squared the square root of negative 1? Well, squaring that, we'd be left with a negative 1. So, these are two important definitions to remember. i, the imaginary number, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, and i squared is equal to negative 1 itself. Alright, so now let's take a look at complex numbers. So a complex number is in this form, a plus bi form. This a is known as the real part. This bi is known as the imaginary part. So you have a real part and an imaginary part, and those together make a complex number. So an example of a complex number may be 2 plus 6i, or maybe negative 4 minus 3i. Right? These are all examples of complex numbers. This takes us into the first part where we start to add complex numbers. So our first example gives us 3 plus 6i added to the quantity of 8 minus 5i. So in adding complex numbers, all we need to do is just remember back to um, polynomials, when we added polynomials. It's the exact same thing, except we're using imaginary numbers here. So to add complex numbers, we just drop the parentheses and rewrite them all. After dropping the parentheses, all we do next is just combine like terms. So the constants are always like terms, 3 and 8. 6i and negative 5i are like terms, right? Because they have the same variable, which is the i, and they're raised both to the first power. So 8 and 3 make 11. 
six i minus five i make positive one i or we could just write i we know that there's an invisible one in front of that i so that's addition just drop the parentheses and combine any like terms let's take a look at another problem we'll do a subtraction problem 10 plus 14 i minus 7 minus 3 i subtraction will be a little bit different all we're going to do here though is just drop the parentheses in that first quantity and in the second one here's the big deal part this negative sign tells us to distribute a negative one through so instead of a positive seven it becomes a negative seven instead of a negative three i it becomes a positive three i right so now since we've distributed through all we need to do is again combine like terms the 10 and negative 7 are like terms 14 I and 3 I are like terms so 10 and negative 7 make 3 14 I and 3 I make 17 I so again for subtraction a little bit extra in that we drop the parentheses in the first quantity however in the second quantity we distribute a negative one or some people just think of it as just changing the signs to their opposites of the quantity on the inside and then after that just combine like terms all right so next example let's try something like 4i times the quantity of 2 minus 8i so I said times the quantity of 2 minus 8i I knew it was multiplication why because I don't see a plus or minus sign between the 4i and this parentheses so I know it's multiplication I know I need to go ahead and distribute 4i times 2 and 4i times negative 8i so 4i times 2 is 8i 4i times negative 8i is negative 32 I squared so that's the key piece right there don't forget that I to the second power remember this is really 4i to the first power times negative 8i to the first power if you think back to properties of exponents when you multiply you add the exponents so we add the first power and that first power to make the second power so we have 8i minus 32i squared all right, now if you scroll back up or rewind some in the video, you remember the definition for i squared is equal to negative one. That was one of the key definitions. So wherever you see i squared in mathematics, you should be ready to substitute in a negative one. So eight i and a negative 32 times a negative one makes a positive 32 and then we're done. All right, so that was just a matter of distributing what's on the outside of the parentheses times everything on the inside. Okay, next example we see is 7 minus 6i times the quantity of negative 8 plus 3i. All right, from the looks of it, this is a complex number times another complex number. Well, specifically, I'm looking at it as a binomial times a binomial. Whenever we see that, we have to do this special process, right? It's called FOIL, the FOIL method. So FOIL just stands for first, outer, inner, and last. First, outer, inner, last. So let's go over the process. First means you multiply the first two terms 7 times negative 8 is negative 56 outer means to multiply the two outside terms so I'll label that with an O so the outer terms are 7 times 3i is 21i inner means the inner two terms so that's negative 6i times negative 8 negative times negative makes a positive 48i 
and then last means the last two terms you haven't touched yet. So negative 6i times positive 3i is negative 18i squared. When doing the FOIL method, you're always going to have to combine like terms somehow with these two middle terms. So we have negative 56, 21i plus 48i is positive 69i minus 18. And remember, i squared is always negative 1. We just said that in the last example, right? All right, so now we keep moving forward with this process. Negative 56 plus 69i. Negative 18 times a negative 18 is a positive 18. And then you're always looking to clean up your expressions. And when I say clean them up, I mean just combine like terms wherever needed. Constants are always like terms. So negative 56 and 18. So that's gonna get us negative. 38 plus 69i. All right, negative 38 plus 69i. So this was a binomial times a binomial, a complex number times another one. We just used the FOIL method, first outer, inner, last, combined like terms, made i squared negative 1, combined like terms again, and then we had our result. take a look a little bit further we move through addition subtraction multiplication and you guessed it next up will be our division so we have 8 over 3i or 8 divided by 3i so I'll write it over again not to write on top of my original problem because then I can't go back and study because I won't know what the original was so here, we can't have an i in the denominator, so here's what we do. We take the i and multiply it by the numerator and denominator. All right, so let's see what we get. So we take an i and multiply it times the 8 and get 8i. Take an i and multiply it times our denominator of 3i and we get 3i squared. So then we get 8i. And again, i squared, that's always going to be there for us. That i squared is going to be negative 1, 8i over negative 3. And that is considered to be simplified as there's no i in the denominator. The next one will be 8 over negative 4 minus 2i. All right? A little bit different as you can tell. You can look at the denominators and see how they're different. The one above has just that one term, 3i. Remember a term is separated by a plus or minus sign. So one term in the problem above of 3i. This problem that I just wrote down, this example, has two terms in the denominator, the negative 4 and the negative 2i. Well, we have to understand that there's something called the complex conjugate that is going to help us out. The complex conjugate is just the change in the sign between the two terms. So the complex conjugate of negative 4 minus 2i is negative 4 plus 2i. Alright, so whatever your complex number is in that denominator, the complex conjugate is just the change in between the two terms, right? See, the sign of the other term remains the same. So the complex conjugate is not the opposite of this complex number. It's just the change in the sign between the two terms. All right, so we're always going to use the complex conjugate when we have division uh, by a complex number. So we just look at the denominator. And you say to yourself, okay, what's your denominator? Here it's negative 4 minus 2i. So we're going to always multiply your denominator by whatever the complex conjugate is of that denominator. So we multiply times negative 4 plus 2i. And you do the same thing to the numerator. You multiply by the complex conjugate, negative 4 plus 2i. All right, so luckily we just now did the FOIL method, so that will 
what we be what we do in the denominator and a few moments ago we also distributed so we're gonna do that in the numerator so let's take a look 8 times negative 4 and then 8 times positive 2i 8 times negative 4 is negative 32 8 times positive 2i is positive 16i alright and it looks like for this one we need to foil do the foil method so first outer inner last so the first negative 4 times negative 4 that's a positive 16 outer is negative 4 times 2i is negative 8i inner negative 2i times negative 4 is positive 8i and then last negative 2i times positive 2i is negative 4i squared remember that when we're multiplying we add the exponents and the two i's have exponents of ones alright so now we're gonna clean it up a little we have negative 32 plus 16i over whenever you multiply a complex number by its complex conjugate these middle two terms these middle two terms will always zero out right a negative 8i and a positive 8i make zero so we're left with the 16 minus 4 i squared well i squared right i squared by definition is negative 1 remember we said that earlier so 4 times negative 1 and then we have 16 negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 Alright, so I'll have negative 32 plus 16i over 16 plus 4 gets me 20. Alright, 16 plus 4 gets me 20. Alright, so then the last thing I want to do is just see if anything can divide into all of these, and I think 4 can go into everything. So that'd be negative 8 plus 4i over 5 and then we're done all right i hope this has helped you out if there's anything you need to see just reply in the comments of what you would like a video be to be made on or send me an email about it